Hi, I'm Yolanda and welcome to Speak On. Today I'm joined by model and skincare writer Rafika, actress and singer Chrissy, blogger Nicole, and model, writer and mental health advocate Lucy. Right, today our discussion is going to take a more serious turn. Um, we're going to talk about the issues around the trend in hashtag MeToo, which came to light last year. Um, loads of news stories broke and that has kind of led to what can only be described as a watershed moment, or global watershed moment in fact, for women and men who have been victims of any kind of sexual abuse um, and inappropriate behaviour as well. Um, this led to, I think, like hundreds of thousands, possibly more, women coming out and using the hashtag MeToo to talk about their experiences. Um, and it could range from just something like some unsolicited comments to quite serious abuse. Um, one of the things that it highlighted was how commonplace this type of behaviour is, but also the fact that so many people have been silenced and didn't feel like they could come forward and talk about it. So today we're going to continue this conversation because it isn't a conversation that should go away. Um, and we're going to talk about our own Me Too moments. So I'll start to get the uh, kick everything off. So my Me Too moment happened, well, one of them, because frankly, this kind of shit happens all the time, um, happened last year when I was on my way home near my house and I was walking along and someone like smacked my bum, but it was like so aggressive and so hard that they lifted up my whole skirt and basically their hand went up my skirt. And because it was crowded, I couldn't see who it was. There were loads of guys around and then I felt scared and it, I was near my house, but then I took a taxi literally one street over to my house because I was too afraid to walk because I didn't know if this person was going to follow me. So then that's one of those moments. I mean, there have been less serious moments, just like also unsolicited dick pics also kind of falls into this as well. So yeah, so I don't know who wants to share one of their Me Too moments. Um, I'll go. Yeah, okay. So um, it's more sort of like a catcalling slash harassment mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. as opposed to actual um, sexual harassment. But basically, I was leaving the station. This was a couple of years ago, so I would have been about 18. Mm -hmm. um, leaving the station to go home, there was a car parked up and um, the guy started talking to me. I pretended I couldn't hear him. I had my headphones in, so I thought all he knew I couldn't hear him. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to cross the bridge at the station and he'll be none the wiser. Little did I know he knew the area, so he just drove around and met me on the other side of the bridge. Mm. And he started talking to me, he's like, I'm just trying to talk to you, blah, 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 blah. And I was so petrified, I literally ran home. Oh. Because I was like, I'm just trying to walk home, like, I don't know what you want from me, I don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're giving me a compliment or not, it's late and I'm young. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was kind of a moment that was really like, wow, mm -hmm. like people are really resi like resilient to rejection. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's the awful thing. It's it, even if you make it so obvious that you're not remotely interested in even engaging in conversation with someone, why would you then continue to pursue that person oh, yeah. to the point where, like mm -hmm. you said, you get that's when you feel scared. That's when you suddenly feel vulnerable because you're like, when is this person going to stop? Because yes. I've already made it really clear I don't want to speak to them. Yeah. Um, and that happens multiple times a yeah, day, of course, you yeah. know? And even, like you say, even from things like catcalling to actually people touching you to something even more serious. It happens all the time. It's so scary. Yeah. It's awful. And I don't know. I definitely think speaking about it can help raise awareness, but in terms of actually stopping it from happening, I don't know. I don't know how you go about that. Yeah, so there's, there's definitely a bigger, there's a much bigger issue here. Yeah. Talking about rejection, I remember once saying to someone, "No, I don't want to talk to you, or go out with you," and they pushed me over a table. Yeah, like legitimately pushed me over a table with loads of glasses on it and everything. Joking. Luckily, someone caught me, so I didn't end up like basically getting cut on the glass yeah. and stuff. So yeah, people are really. Where does yeah. that thought come from? Where it's like, right, this person is rejecting me, why, why do you then feel like, you know, this person owes me that, they owe me mm -hmm. something, but no, you don't even know them. It's, it's a sense of so entitlement, bizarre. which is really annoying because men are not entitled to anything. Mm. And it, it ties into with, with, the, with the rape allegations and everything. It's a lot of people say, oh, it's how a woman dresses. In society, we should teach women not to dress a certain way, but boys not to harass girls that dress the way that they want to dress. Mm -hmm. yeah. The whole entitlement thing is, it just, it baffles me. Yeah, and I suppose a lot of what happened with this whole Me Too was about people abusing their power, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. So it could be, for example, someone that owns a model agency 
inappropriately hitting on all their clients and things like that and thinking it's okay or just kind of casually glossing over it and obviously in the case of all the stories that have come out it's usually people that run a company who are protected by layers and layers of money and everything else and people being frightened of their careers and stuff which is yeah not on at all and it is so commonplace i i remember i was 17 i was still in performing arts school and this producer who i met in the industry um, invited me to a premiere with him and we went for dinner afterwards and he was in no way affiliated with me i had no kind of like um contract with him or anything like that but every single industry person i met that night he was making sure they went through him so that i would always have to speak to him and about two years ago I saw in the newspaper that he was being arrested because he had raped a bunch of young women mm, in, yeah. the, in exactly this same situation. Yeah. I just blocked him off everything, never spoken to him again because he spoke to me very inappropriately on, on the evening. Um, but yeah, it could have been so much worse. Mm. And it does happen all the time. That's terrifying. Yeah, yeah, that's really scary. So in terms of some of the things that you've told me, have you is this something that you've like was have you actually told other people about it or were these things that because for example the one where i got hit on the bum i didn't even tell my i didn't tell my boyfriend about it mm -hmm. like for i kind of mentioned it to him but after i said oh, i'm coming home and i'm rushing home but i didn't actually say why i just didn't talk about it because it's so commonplace yeah. are they things that you actually mentioned to other people or they you bring them up for the first time now or i think things like catcalling it sounds awful, but I don't even register it. Mm -hmm. Happens yeah, so it happens often. Every day, it? You don't yeah. even th you don't even register it as for what it is, which is sexual harassment. Mm. You don't even think about it because it just happens constantly. And if you ever do call someone on it, the abuse that you get back, it's almost not worth it. Mm. Mm. I feel like um, a lot <coughs> of confusion comes down to there's a stark difference between you almost like checking someone out or like giving someone a compliment and catcalling mm. someone. Um, and I think that's where some of the problems arise. Because when I talk about catcalling, I always make it very clear. Well, no, it, it was just an objectification of me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I made it clear that I wasn't interested in, never in a horrible way. I never reject people in a rude way because I'm just, I believe in being a polite person. Mm -hmm. So you've taken that as weakness mm -hmm. and you've decided to pursue anyway. And yeah. that for me is harassment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you've said, to write this at Chrissy, so when you've, whenever you may have had any of these moments and you've told people, how did they react? So, for example, it's also the difference between how did, um, if you told a woman, how did she react? And if you told a guy, how did he react? Um, but they're both the same, really. They both said you need to tell somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had situations in the past, but it's, it can be even just subtle things like you could be talking to a colleague at work or whatever, and they'll just literally be looking at your tits the whole time. And, I'm, and you feel like they're not actually saying anything. They're being really polite. How can you pull them up on it? Mm -hmm. But it just really, it gets, it gets to you. It's just little, th it could be anything on the train, working with a colleague. I've had like really weird remarks before from men and I'm just, I don't know where to go. Some, again, with people that have a bit of power mm -hmm. in the limelight and stuff like that. And I've like, I can't say anything because they've got away with it for so long. Yeah. And I've just had to say something because that is just in my character. I can't, yeah. I can't hide or, you know, shy it away. I have to say how I feel, yeah. so. And in your industry, because obviously you're a yeah. singer, you know, you're, you, you're in a band, you're a West End performer and everything else. What, have you ever felt like um, your career might be at risk of talking about these things? Or? Yeah, I, I definitely feel like that. I mean, when you're younger as well, working with a lot of, high profile people and stuff, mm -hmm. you, you're worried, you're, you're still trying to break into the career yourself. So I do think there is that element there, but my character, if something got too far, I would have to say I would, I'd put it at risk. Yeah. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know how I would be in that situation. It could be a completely di different situation when you're in it, but I think now I, I wouldn't allow it. Yeah. In some, some cases you say it because it's worth being said, sometimes it's so commonplace, you don't necessarily say it because you're just so used to it. But you're just so annoyed like, with it. Yeah, yeah. It's like when it sticks, sometimes it just sticks with you as well. It's like, that just really, yeah. Yeah, it's mm. like it's in your mind the whole day. Like, it mm -hmm. could just be the most subtle thing, but you know what they're doing. Yes. Like, and you think, how can you actually do that? Mm. You work with me, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. So it's... Yeah. 
Okay, cool. It is a power thing. Yeah, sure. and that's quite disturbing, isn't it? And I suppose that was the case for many of these people that have come forward now. I mean, I love that so many people have come forward and it's become this big conversation. I mean, it always shocks me that people are so surprised with how many people that have come forward. But I suppose it's the, the privilege of potentially, I suppose with some guys, the privilege of being a guy. But obviously we've also seen these other allegations coming out with around like Kevin Spacey and stuff like that. It's slightly scary as well because none of these things, in media land, everybody yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I had yeah. a male friend the other day actually say he was so surprised that you know these these women don't come forward straight away, and I thought, why are you surprised? Yeah. Like the the amount of backlash that women get, like even from other women. Like, um, there was um, who is that footballer who was um, arrested for rape allegations this year for a young girl in hospital. I mean, not, not hospital, in a hotel, sorry. There was a few, or a few. I mean, exactly, yeah. that's awful, there yeah. was a few. And I saw this girl that I know on Facebook saying, oh, silly little slag, she obviously knew it's gonna happen, you don't go back to a hotel room. And it's like, how can you possibly think that? Like, she's come forward and had the bravery to speak about this awful thing that's happened to her. Mm -hmm. And you still get the backlash of, what were you wearing? Were you drunk at the time? Mm -hmm. Oh, are you sure you didn't just wanna sell a story? Like, yeah. Yeah, this is it. it's just, I can't comprehend it. And then people wonder why more women don't come forward and speak about mm. it. Yeah, I suppose the problem is you'll, you'll, you go forward about it, you come forward about it, sorry, and automatically you're not believed. Yeah, and yeah, automatically this is it. the kind of the so onus comes on you. So much victim blaming. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. And also I found that even when you're talking about the stories, I remember when I initially said, talked about that story to someone else, and I said, I was wearing, I talked about what I was wearing, and I was like, why? Why does it matter? I was yeah. like, yeah, I could have been wearing my underwear. It doesn't bloody matter, does it? Yeah. No one should be touching me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so. like that Netflix show I was binge watching last night. Um, she's got to have it. Oh, and I she's haven't watched this yet. No, it's I amazing. Need it. Everybody needs to watch it. And she, she's dating like three guys, but they all know the situation. She's mm -hmm. just casually dating. Um, and she buys this little black dress. Mm -hmm. And all of them make a comment to say like when they when they're out like that dress is a bit short and she gets really offended she's like yeah. why and they're really shocked that she's offended mm. but it's a really good episode i think it's like episode four okay. it's had yeah. netflix kind of playing but yeah, yeah it was it was a really good episode in talking about this because she was harassed on the street and mm -hmm. someone cat called her and then grabbed her yeah. um so it was like a sort of reaction of how she's coping with that how she's dealing with that mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's a really good. Okay, show why to do watch. men do that though? Why do men feel like what you're wearing entitles them to grab you? Are we cavemen still? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, not to say that like clothing has anything to do with anything. When she was grabbed, she was wearing a long coat to the floor and like baggy trousers, leaving her friend's house just from like a, a wind down and a shit chat. Yeah. So it was interesting. Yeah, it's it, it's so irrelevant. It's like it's like saying oh, no one's ever been raped that was that was wearing jeans and a t-shirt of course they have been yeah it doesn't matter they're, they're not all lying on the floor naked yeah like it's got nothing to do with you. Mm. None well, of i suppose it. also Unless you've got to think insane. about in exactly. the context of culture and countries <coughs> how people may dress differently so it doesn't matter it's happening to people across yeah. the world yeah all throughout time when people dress differently so i suppose it's got nothing which just illustrates perfectly it's got nothing to do with what anybody's wearing mm -hmm. but it is all to do with an abuse of power and yeah. that kind of fun stuff yeah Yay. so yeah <laughs> i know right <laughs> That kind of thing. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure where this will go next year, but mm. and, and, I hope it and beyond. I hope loads of girls keep speaking out about it because yeah. within my industry, and you'd probably experience this as well. Um, I only realise this from talking to other models who have gone through the same thing, but that's only when you register it, the same thing has happened to them. Mm. We don't speak about it because you're so scared about being blacklisted or put into the sin bin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you know, if it gets back, then suddenly you're the person that nobody Get the, you don't get the castings, you don't get mm. booked. Yeah. So but if you don't pull them up on it, they'll never ever um, stop getting away with it. They're always going to carry on. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just got to have the bravery to tr try and just mm. put them in their place. Mm. Yeah, I suppose hopefully the one thing that this conversation will bring is that people will stop fearing their careers. I mean, you can never <coughs> truly stop fearing something will happen, but hopefully it means that, you know, people, they can come forward yeah. and we can say collectively, especially women to women, we can say collectively, we believe, we believe you. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will have some kind of effect. And that's the, the best thing, I suppose, the best possible outcome of all these guys getting just locked up and sued and everything sure, else. Yeah. And long may it continue. Yes. <laughs> long may it continue. May all those people just get what they deserve, eh? We've been talking about our Me Too moments and the impact of that kind of movement and that conversation globally. 
when the allegations were, let's say, tumbling out, um, a lot of people made comments that could be considered victim blaming. Um, and we're going to focus on two comments in particular from two high profile women. I'm going to read them out and then after we'll, we'll discuss. So the first comment um, was from Angela Lansbury. And for those of you who aren't of the right age, you know who she is. Mm -hmm. She is the voice of Mrs. Potts in Beauty and the Beast, because I'm just trying to think oh, of how okay. old, how old you are. When I was younger, she was on Murder, She Wrote. So she is, I mean, we'll put this into concept, context. She is like, I want to say in her 90s. So yeah, she's just to put like this in. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So, OK, she said, <clears throat> we must sometimes take blame, women. I really do think that. Although it's awful to say we can't make ourselves look as attractive as possible without being knocked down and raped. Oh, Mrs. Potts. <laughs> OK, and then the next comment is from fashion designer Don Donna Karen. Mm. <clears throat> you look at everything all, all over the world today and how women are dressing and what they are asking by just presenting themselves the way they do. What are they asking for? Trouble? So, OK, so I'll let everybody take a collective breath. Right, okay, cool. <laughs> Literally, that was so <laughs> audible. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to start with Rafika. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what, would be, what would be your response, your initial response to those comments? Well, how I dress never justifies, you know, a, man, a, pr a guy approaching me or taking from me what is rightfully mine to give to whoever I choose. So what I wear is never a question. How I look should never be a question. If you find me attractive, Tell me that, that's fine. But don't think that you are therefore entitled to come up and take from me what is mine to give to whom I choose. Yeah. It's yeah. a great that's statement. True. Yes, girl. Sorry, I feel yeah. really passionate about that's that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all feeling it, trust me. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you think that do you know, I was actually say I'm gonna direct this at Lucy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, do you think that when we've talked about this a little bit in, in part one, are those attitudes reflected elsewhere? That kind what of do you mean? That the kind of victim blaming. Obviously, these two women have said it in that context, but mm. are these attitudes reflected? Like, for example, if you were to describe what was happening to you, do you think that people initially just like come back with victim blaming and like kind yeah, of subtle 100%. ways? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, even I won't go into details, but I've had something happen to me where police did have to get involved, and I was interviewed by two female police officers, and they still asked me what I was wearing and if I'd been drinking, and I just. I couldn't believe that that was what they were asking me yeah. because the male police officers were like beside themselves, really upset that this had happened. And, and here are my sisters asking me what I was wearing. And I just thought, I, j I just can't get my head around that, that thinking. Because I mean, if you go back Victorian times, women walking around in huge long dresses, nothing showing, yeah. but, they still, but women were still raped. Mm. So how does that work? I mean, fashions change. Um, you have your legs out now. I don't. Does that mean that one of us is more likely to get raped or m or wants it? Like, how does that work? Where does the where does the line come? It's it's yeah. crazy. Mm. It's weird. Seem, seems to be some kind of internalized thing that maybe we've started to I don't know develop as women uh, women over time because obviously we're always kind of made to feel responsible for what mm. happens to us. So I can only imagine that with Donna and Angela that is the case that it's become this internalized almost yeah. internalized misogyny mm. you've kind of i suppose you're implicit in your own like demise al almost yeah. mm. and implicit in your own um i don't know oppression at times um so i'm going to ask nicole this so do we have a responsibility for our own safety as women it's unfortunate because yes but i don't agree that we should mm -hmm. i think that we should be allowed to walk where we want when we want wear what we want but the way society is structured, it's structured in the favour of the patriarchy. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we've all come to abide by. Mm -hmm. So I don't agree that we should have to be cautious and watch out for our safety because I do feel like a rapist is a rapist, whichever way you spin it, like a victim is a victim. Mm -hmm. um, but it is structured so that it's like, oh, well, you know, like I'm not going to um, walk down my road at two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. just in case yeah. it yeah. is that kind of culture that we live in and I think I feel like that's a shared world culture which is really sad yeah. you shouldn't be walking home on your own it's yeah. late yeah. at night yeah. you can't just walk freely mm. and, and be and you never say yeah. that to a guy would you no. you never yeah. say oh babe text me when you're home yeah don't wear no, that, that, yeah. that but we always do that <laughs> when girls go out don't we yeah, yeah. and that's it's really sorry. sad, yeah. why, it do is sad. We, why do we have to do that mm. and then I'd say direct this to Chrissy. Mm. What would be your 
if you were if Angela Lansbury and Donna Karen were here, what would you say to them? As a woman, as a as a woman from like a from your like a different generation to them, yeah, everything yeah. else is there. What would you say to them about that? I think they just need to be a bit more liberal, a bit more understanding. They're from an era, basically the dinosaur age, <laughs> especially Angela. Yeah, oh bless her. I love her, great, yeah. but like to just come out with those kind of statements, mm -hmm. like you have to be able to back it up. I mean, I don't know if she has replied mm -hmm. to um, anybody's um, criticism to her comments, so I'm not sure, but I just think she's from an era where you literally did as any, they were told, mm -hmm. Now, somebody of our era, maybe in 90 years, yeah. I think it would be a completely different comment. Mm. Yeah. So, I don't, know what, I don't know what I'd say to her, to be honest, because yeah. I just don't agree with it in any way. Yeah, so. that's fair enough. And do you have any thoughts on this or any fi anything to add, Rafika? Any final, final points? Um, I think no matter what we wear, like the points being made by mm -hmm. these two ladies, you're letting us as women know that men can't be held responsible because they can't control their urges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Yeah. Bullshit, please. Yeah. Yeah, and that's such a damaging... Yeah. So you're letting lads know, young boys, it's okay if you want to touch that. If you like what you see, go ahead and grab it. Go ahead and take it. Mm -hmm. It's not right. Mm -hmm. That's fair enough. It's like they say as well, they should... It's not about teaching girls to dress appropriately. It's about teaching guys to stop behaving inappropriately, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. And there's... Um, Badass cross stitch who have the boys will be boys and yeah. it's got a crossed out line. It's like boys will held be held accountable, accountable for their <laughs> fucking <laughs> actions. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for today because um, I know this is quite an emotive subject and it can bring up a lot of issues um, for us and for people watching it. Um, we're sharing kind of fairly personal stories and I suppose it's something that we go through all the time, annoyingly. Um, and um, as, you, as Rafika says, grinds our gears. Um, <laughs> And, you know, in this one thing to, I think to take away from this, in the broad spectrum of behaviour from unsolicited comments or pictures through to sexual assault, any situation where you're made to feel uncomfortable or unsafe is completely unacceptable. And hopefully talking about this will mean that everybody realises that and will have the courage and feel supported enough to be able to come forward and talk about these things. Um, yeah, exactly, to speak up. Um, there are loads of organisations that can give support and information and that information will be below the video. Um, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.